You know, when Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote the Gulag Archipelago, which is the book that detailed the catastrophes of the Soviet Union and helped bring it down, there's one part of that book that just struck me so, so viciously when I read it. He, he was in the, in the Gulag, and he, he was there for a very long time, and he said that he observed a variety of people in the camps who he really admired. They were rare. They were usually religious believers in his, in his experience who were not participating in the pathology of the camps at all, period, no matter what. He said he learned a lot from watching those people. He had a hard time believing that they even existed, that they could even exist. But he said that one of the things that he was brought to as a consequence of watching those people live their contract with goodness out, even under the most horrifying of conditions, was that it was possible that he himself was responsible for his position in the camp. Now, it's a very dangerous line of argumentation, you know, because who wants to be the one who blames the victim for the catastrophe, you know? You have to be very careful when you walk down that road. But Solzhenitsyn was speaking about himself. And he said, well, he was a communist, you know, and he arrogantly and forthrightly moved the movement out into the world and had not fully gone over his life with a fine-tooth comb to find out what mistakes he had made that brought him so low. But his contention eventually was that part of the reason that he ended up where he ended up was because he and many others had completely forfeited their relationship with the truth and allowed their society to degenerate into deceit and tyrannical catastrophe without mounting sufficient opposition. And so he decided when he was in the camps to straighten himself out bit by bit. And that culminated in the production of the Gulag Archipelago and that book really demolished once and for all any moral credibility that the communist totalitarian systems had left. And so one man in, in the depths of catastrophe who determined through good example, at least in part, to stop lying, produced a book, eventually, that demolished the foundation of the very system that had imprisoned him. And that is really worth thinking about. That's one example of the absolute grandeur of the human soul and the capacity for transformation that it has when let loose properly on the world. So let's say you're conceptualizing your own failure, you know, and you meditated on it and you come to the conclusion that God forced Cain to. Hey, not only have things not been going very well for you, but it's actually your fault. And not only that, you brought it on yourself. And not only that, you knew it all the time. Well, then you might think you'll wake up and fly right, right? You'll get your wings in order and fly right. But there's no reason to assume that at all. And that's not what happens to Cain. That just makes him more bitter. Right? And you can understand that if you think about it just for a second. It's like bad enough when something horrible happens to you. But then to have to swallow the additional pill, right? To have to take in the information that you could have done something different. It was avoidable. And you knew it at the time. And you decided to do it anyways. And I think people are in that situation a lot more often than ever anyone is willing to admit. You know, you have that little voice in the back of your head that says, Don't do it. <laughs> and you override it. And you know it's arrogance that makes you override it. It's always arrogance, you know. It always warns you. It's always arrogance. Yeah, I can get away with it. It's like, no, you can't. I don't think you ever get away with anything. So, and maybe your experience has taught you different, but my suspicions are it hasn't. And if you think it has, well, the other shoe hasn't yet dropped. So, Cain doesn't take the opportunity to let God's wisdom reorient his character. And that... That could have been the outcome. He could have got down on his knees, so to speak, and said, oh my, oh my God, I've been wrong all along. I've been living improperly. I've been making the wrong sacrifices. Abel deserves everything he has. I got exactly what was coming to me. You know, could I possibly now straighten myself out and, 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 and live in repentance and improve my position? But that's not what he did at all. He said, all right, fair enough. I get it. It's like... I'm going to go after the thing I most admire and I'm going to destroy it and I'm going to do that despite its cost to me and I'm going to do that just to spite the creator of being. Well, that's exactly what Harris did. 
in, at Columbine. It's exactly what he says, in fact, in his uncanny writings. It's why the mass murderers always shoot themselves afterwards, not before. Because you might wonder if you're so upset with the structure of being, why do you don't just commit suicide in your basement? Why do you have to go out and mass murder before you top it off with a gun to your forehead? Well, you don't make the point as effectively if you just commit suicide in your basement. It's like, well, I, my life means nothing to me. But neither does anyone else's and neither does the structure of being itself. And I'll take all my revenge as much as I possibly can. And then just to show you how little I care, I'll cap myself off at the end. And I would say also, people say all the time, I don't understand how that could happen. It's like, I don't believe that. I think an hour of thought, of real thought, real thought about your darkest feelings about existence itself illuminates the pathway to that sort of behavior quite clearly. And I think if you... I mean, I might be wrong. Like, I might be a darker person than most. And it's certain... <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, at least I think there are plenty of people out there who are sufficiently dark to know exactly what I mean when I'm saying these things. And I would also say that if it doesn't leap to your understanding how that pathway might be illuminated, then you need to know a lot more about yourself than you actually know now. Because whatever you might say about someone like Eric Harris, he was a human being too, you know.